JavaScript is a high level language, which means it can be really easy to learn, but it can also be really easy to introduce some weird bugs into your code if you don't understand what's going on behind the scenes. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some gotchas that you can run into when assigning variables, specifically with objects and arrays. So what's happening when we define this variable? So we're gonna say, JavaScript, please put one into memory and then give me a reference to that one. And I'm going to call that reference with this keyword here called my const. Now we're also telling JavaScript, we can't change that reference. If we do try to change that reference, so we say here that my const is now equal to two, so replace the one in memory with two, we're going to get an error that says assignment to constant variable. To get around this, we can of course use let. So now we're saying put one into memory, give me a reference to that one, and I'm gonna call that reference my const, but we also want to be able to change that reference. So now we can change the reference to two, and we can console log, and of course now we get two. So how does this work with objects? So what we're doing here is we're saying, hey JavaScript, please put this empty object into memory, then give me a reference to that object, and I'm gonna call that reference by first object, and I don't want to be able to change this reference. I want this to be a const. So now if we try to change that reference here, so we're gonna say, hey JavaScript, change the reference to this other object in memory that has a name with John, and assign it to this first object variable. And of course, JavaScript is going to complain, we're going to get an error assignment to const variable. Okay, so what happens if we do it this way? We're gonna say again, JavaScript put this empty object into memory, give me a reference to that object. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna say, on that object, define a property called name and assign the value to John. Now what's gonna happen here? And JavaScript is going to allow us to do this, but why? We've defined this as a constant. But what we've defined as a constant is the reference to that object, not what the properties on that object should be. So now we can change the property on that object and JavaScript allows us to do it. And this is where we can run into some gotchas. So we're going to define this first object again, and this is going to be an empty object. Then we're going to define a second object, and this is going to be equal to our first object. And so we can assume now that second object is just an empty array. So we're going to change the name property on second object to John, and we're going to console log out our first object. What do we expect to happen here? Well, we might expect it to log an empty object, but it doesn't. It actually logs name is equal to John. And the reason that it does this is because when we define second object here, we're saying point this to wherever our first object sits in memory. We're not actually saying our second object is equal to the value of first object, we're saying it's equal to the pointer of first object. And this can be a little bit confusing in JavaScript because if we were to log first object, we're of course going to get the value. We're not going to get some memory address. In other languages, if you log out a pointer without dereferencing it, you're going to get the memory address where that value sits. JavaScript does all this for us behind the scenes. So how can we fix this? Well, we can define our first variable and then we can define our second variable and on our second variable, we're going to create a new object with these object curly braces here. And then we're going to spread the values of first object into our second object. This means that second object here does not reference first object in memory. It references a new object. Now, if we change the name property on second object and we log our first object, we get an empty object as we would expect. So how does this work with arrays? Well, it's basically the same as objects. So we're going to define this first array here. This is going to be equal to an empty array. Then we're going to define second array here. It's going to reference our first array here. We're going to push onto second array, and then we're going to log out our first array. And of course we get John, because what we're actually doing is we're logging out this property here, which we've now pushed to. Again, to fix this, we can have this empty array here, and then we need to define a second array and we need to define a new array, and then we're going to spread the values of our first array. We can push to our second array, and if we log our first array, we haven't mutated the actual value. So here's another gotcha that I've run into in production code. So we have these two objects here. We have first object, second object. First object has a name property and an age, and second just has a name property. We're going to import lodash, and then we're going to merge our first and second objects and then our merged value is going to have a name of Jane and then an age of 30, which comes from our first object here. What happens now if we say merge.name is equal to new name and then we console log first object, our first object's name is now new name and the age is 30. 
The reason that it's doing this is because we haven't actually created a new object with merge. We've just returned the reference to our first object. So if we change the name property on our merged value, we're actually changing the name on our first object. We can get around this by defining a new object to merge everything into as the first argument to merge. If we go back, you can see that in that first argument is actually our first object, which is where we're going to merge everything into. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.